the Fox Valley's classic rock. 103.9 The Fox. All right, so if you called the Illinois Paranormal Investigations, they came to your house. They come with these kind of bags with them, right? And then this handsome gentleman to my right here, uh, Chad Griffiths. These glasses. <laughs> They told me that. Uh, but they also bring a lot of equipment as well that uh, they're going to be using to check out what's happening in, uh, in your particular situation. Now, tell us a bit about some of the stuff you've got. Well, most of what you see are going to be for just about every single profession but our own. There's only recently did they start making things that are specifically for us. Um, one of them actually that I have is kind of a mixed blend. But I'll just kind of go like, you know, if someone's walking through, a lot of times we'll have our camera set up, which I should set, show first. These are our IR cameras. We've set these up and we get a good 100 foot range on them, really good night vision. Just if you're wearing thin thread count clothing, don't stand in front of them. Well, they yes. do have a tendency to see through very readily. Might see something you don't want to see or something you do want to see. Standard, just eight channel DVR recorders. Beautiful little remotes. We don't always have to be right with them. Now, do you guys set these up remotely or do you guys We go in, in and set up everything ourselves. Um, it, what we do is when we go in, we usually first will set up, and then we get out of there for anywhere from a half hour to an hour, to kind of let the dust settle. Some of the basic things, I mean, everybody's always got their walkie on them. We'll carry those around. The flashlights, a lot of them we're now using are the black light flashlights. Good so, oh, black light. Look at nice little flashlight there. There you go, your fox. You know, but we'll use these because then it's not if we do accidentally flash our IR cameras, we're not blinding the camera or ourselves. So, but we also set up our digital voice recorders. Many of these we set out there and we'll set them up. Normally we'll set one up by every camera just so it's in view of the camera. And we'll set them up in some places there are none. Come running up to it and say hi. Hi. A couple different like thermometers we'll use. So... You know, two different places in here are given two different temps, but normally within a three degrees, not a issue. Well, then we're not haunted in here. Well, well in the room, not. Not in the room, no. <clears throat> One of the things we like to do also is to prove that it's not somebody walking through. If you're not seeing somebody, but you see something, we have a laser light, which I'll go ahead and set it over on the wall there. You can kind of see over there, it gives a nice little red. Now, if someone is walking through it, suddenly you're going to have that come through. The camera can pick it up. And especially at night vision, this comes in. Everything's in black and white except for that's a nice, beautiful red. Uh, we use an iPod for simple fact is we like to play white noise sometimes. So while we're doing it, you'll hear this going on. Sometimes it'll help us pick something up. Sometimes it'll actually help blend out any other background noise that we've got going on. Get down there. In a radio station, you definitely don't want white noise. That is for sure. That would just mean that you're not doing your job and no, no one's hearing you. No. Um, no. Electrician's tool here. This one's the EMF meter. Just picks up the electromagnetic frequencies. It's measuring gauze. Normally when it's anything above like a 2, that's where people can get their headaches and such. I was in here testing it out earlier. I think over here I was getting like about a 1. Okay, now I'm getting only about a point four. There was a couple pieces of equipment it would come up and raise. Now the microphone. Mics are point eight, yeah. So over your board. Hey, wow! You know most things in here are really nicely insulated, though. Well, yeah, you know, we had to do it. You know, it's a new studio. We have to do what we got to do. You know. <clears throat> but we've had it where this thing is actually overloaded. We'll have a big OL on it before. One of the places was our DeSoto House Hotel. They had one of these older vent systems. Well, whenever one of the vent switches would kick in. That thing, even touching it with your hand, you were burning yourself. Wow. And it would just overload with everything. You ever had, like, one of those moments, like, I remember in Ghostbusters where, like, Egon had that thing, you know, and he's <laughs> walked up to the guy and he just kind of goes, yeah, and then just kind of push it. You ever do that to somebody when you're at, <laughs> actually, on the site, you know? My kids years ago decided, you know, some of these shows were kind of wacky as they were putting it, and they made up their own parodies. Very nice. We've got, um, my oldest stepson did one, it was the, uh, Crocodile Hunter and the Ghost Hunter mixed into one. Okay. So he'd always jump out and go, Croiky, it's haunted. Cro and the other one, he's still picking up nothing. Well, then he comes up to one of my other kids and he goes, 
Dude, it's quick. It's manifesting. As he's pulling the person. <laughs> yeah. Kind of the, from the Ghostbusters. Yeah. That's what they wanted. Which I loved it. And it's a research on. device they've kind of created. There was something called the Ghost Box Clone. Okay. Now this will, as you hear, it's a radio station. So let's see here. I can go up and down. Let's try, let's see, 103.9 maybe? Yes, let's try that. It's a good station, I heard. I heard it's really good. Yes, indeed. I heard the morning show's a little weird, though, you know, but... <laughs> we make no guarantees of what happens there. Not the best reception inside the studio, but... Yeah. What we'll do is you can set how fast you want it to scan, and... Let's see here. Let's give it about a 150 on a scan, and then we'll just go ahead and... It'll scan through like this. Now, normally, we'll put our recorder next to it, so... But you'll hear you're only getting fragments of words and things. There are some audios that I brought in for you that you will also can hear where one of these is going off, and you get a real demonic laugh. <laughs> and now when we were, we were standing there, we never heard it, but when we reviewed it, that's when it was heard, and there was one guy we were saying which room it came from. He suddenly did not want to go in that room. Wow. So, but this is really kind of a cool thing. So, you know, originally it was just a radio. They disconnected mute, so it would just scan away. Sweet. Then, of course, standard cameras just to take pictures. We have another one at the house that it's some of the older SLR cameras that we ended up converting um, to a full-spectrum camera, which is kind of interesting because... More light, but you're getting, some people call it true color. Some of them just call it really funky. Now, for that, when you're taking a picture of the camera there, you're looking for things like orbs and stuff like that, kind of? I'm one of those that, <laughs> my group laughs about this. Um, I've had posts on Facebook saying orb away in that, because I'm one of the biggest, you show me an orb, and I'm going to tell dust, dirt, bug. You know, I just, yeah. I've never been a big fan of orbs. I will admit, when we find one, Okay, I'll admit it. Yeah. But, you know, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of them listening Halloween morning in the group. They're going to just start laughing about this. But I'm one of those that you show me an orb, you better be ready to back it up. Otherwise, you're going to be off crying. It's going to be an orb debate. It's going to be a big orb debate. But um, a lot of times we will look. We're just taking the pictures to see what we pick up. We've had it in the past. Uh, chocolate store in Galena called Chocolat. Uh -huh. We were investigating, and they've got a back storage room area. We'd heard some noise coming back from back there, and it sounded like someone moving around. And it wasn't just like, okay, you got a mouse or something. That wasn't any of that kind of sound. It was like literally a person by the way boxes were moving. Well, we just kind of took a picture. The next day, we were looking through, and there was this weird little area. Well, you know when you blow up a picture to where it starts to get blur, it's not pixelated. It's just kind of blurring. Yeah. There was one little section in it. All it was was pixelated. We couldn't really identify what it was, but it was just something that was different. Yeah. Another thing we have there a lot of times is handprints that'll show up above this doorway because their back wall is all glass. And, you know, you've got to be real tall to reach up to where these handprints are. And it's, we've had them where they're littler than my hand, bigger than my hand, just always showing up there. Mm. So we've, we always uh, try to look at all aspects of what we can. I mean, we've even tested out... Uh, for instance, the glass, we had somebody sitting on someone else's shoulders trying to reposition to put their hand up there to see if they could leave a print. But when you put your hand up there, even if it's wet, it doesn't give you the same look as these handprints that are left there. Have you ever had somebody who, it was their first, it was their first investigation. They showed up, they were there, and they just said, you know what? This is also my last investigation. I'm not doing this again. Because they, they could not handle how, how probably tense it can get. We've actually had both ends of that spectrum. That one, yes, I've had. We had a girl that, she was like, I can do this, I can do this, I'm going to do this. And probably about halfway through the investigation, turned around and said, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave. I'm, this isn't for me. I can't do this. She was freaking out because we kept getting, and we even found out it was a natural cause, but she was freaking out because she didn't know it yet, but it was wind that was blowing through. And giving kind of this oh, yeah, kind of sound. Mm. She thought it was something else before we even got to figure it out. She took off. She couldn't handle it. She was freaking out. On the other end, though, I did have one of our guys that joined the group. And he goes, now, I'm going to let you know. If I get scared, I'm gone. The end of the investigation, he's like, dude, when are we doing this again? I got to do this again. It's awesome. Adrenaline junkies. Yeah. Trust yeah. me, he is, too. 
But Hi, Chris. Because <laughs> But to Illinois Paranormal Investigations, Chad Griffiths with us here. You get to play with a lot of toys here, which is cool, and, and they all... And you get to play in the dark. Exactly. You get to play in the dark, too, and Mom and Dad told you not to. But, of course, uh, check them out. Once again, the website is... illparainvestigations.net. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming by. And Thank of course, you. Thank great you. stuff. Thanks. Radio Department, thanks for watching.